United Healthcare, the best performer on the Dow, so we get it, uh, healthcare. Uh, the sector in the green for the year, the chart master is here, and he's sticking with his bullish call on healthcare. And uh, it's kind of cool, Carter, because I saw you earlier this week uh, on Squawk Box, and so far so good for the for, for the. Er, was it Squawk Box, or was I actually watching when I left here? Because I, but I, you made a good call on Bitcoin. I think he always makes good calls. Well, you I, know, we oh, that was it. with Melissa. Actually, was it? That's but, right. but you were on recently. That's right. We were early, early morning stuff. But it was, uh, you know, we all got our duds. Let's. Uh, Let's look at healthcare. I mean, here's the thing. It, it, it's one of these rare sectors that has both offense and defense, and I think that's a very desirable characteristic. But I've got three charts in a row, and they are relative charts. So the line itself is not price. It's one thing relative to another. In this case, it's the healthcare sector relative to the S&P. And you can see here, since 1989, we have literally come down to trend, and we have bounced to the penny, to the penny, to the penny, and we did it again. And so we could put in some arrows to annotate that, and you'll see that here. Stick with it. Let's kind of zero in on the here and now and, and look at relative a different way. So the next one is a two panel, and this is just XLV on top, the ETF, and SPY on the bottom. And what we have is, this is essentially the beginning of the year. And we know that almost everything is down, including healthcare. But what is it really doing? It's going straight up relative to the S&P, alpha personified. So two more charts. The sector itself, as depicted by the ETF. Uh, to my eye, this is very well formed. And I think you catch this for a pop as drawn. And it can come up into here. Nice trade. And then finally. The biggest uh, waiting in the entire sector, UNH to the penny, to the penny, to the penny, to the penny, to the penny. There's your COVID low. It's a beautiful 45 degree angle. I think you just take your arrow and extend it. All good. All right. My mind is mush. It was Squawk Box, <laughs> but it was Melissa. See, that's how it, I, it was Melissa interview when you made some of those points, but it was on Squawk Box. That was last week. Okay, I got it. And uh, it, Grasso's here. Grasso, you weren't sitting here, and I actually forgot about you. <laughs> I apologize. I just, I just, I, I, know you you, did. I got up at 3.30. I, I got up oh, at 3.30. <laughs> Way in. I'm, you, no you problem. Get, I'm you, still, you, did, whatever's on your mind, I want to know. Even your pick at the open, whatever you want to talk about. This was, I, I I actually felt like I was just watching the show. You guys are pretty good, so I, I didn't want to jump in. So you guys are doing sorry. an excellent job. I'm on sorry. Friday. Plus, it, awesome. I, I, I no, understand. No option. Is it Friday? So is option action there's, tonight? There's OA on deck. Uh, <laughs> Stay tuned. Happens every Friday Thank at 5:30. Exactly. Okay. Grasso, come so, on. So give I, me something. I'll just give you a little, little, little bit of a drop down. So we'll start off where where uh, Carter left off. I think you're starting to see. People just go into what they think is, is quasi-safe or, or safer than the overall market. You have Lilly up in the last month. He pointed that out. Biogen's up a different, a different sector, a different part of the sector. That's up 10% for the month. Merck up 13% for the month. UNH, he nailed that. Moderna, that's one that's highly volatile, Joe. That's up 30% for the last month. So I think you're seeing people just rotate out of where they got crushed, moving into where they think the puck is going. And I do think you have a window of opportunity to where Tim started off saying that inflation has peaked. I do believe inflation has peaked, and I do believe you have a window of opportunity to see the market rally into mid-August. Mid and not to get too cute, I think we wind up making new lows after August. That matches with some of the technicians we've had on. Steve, and, and predicting a, a summer respite uh, and then maybe, uh, you know, renewed back in the soup toll, that horrible month that we've seen in the past, October, where we've seen so many bottoms uh, in the past. What, I guess that, ha is there any hope that that doesn't happen, that, we've are, that the ultimate lows are in, Grasso, would, would it be the first time that's ever happened? If, if we already had oil, what, no, down? I, if oil's down, how much? I mean, if, if, this, if, if inflation rolls over, the labor picture eases a little bit. There's no way that, that uh, it could be clear sailing from here. Yeah, I think, I think it can be clear sailing. And not to get political, but I think uh, both parties want to see sort of a, regi a regime change. So I think the midterm elections have the ability to be the catalyst to a rally that pushes us into year end. And I do think that you're going to see oil. I, I said oil is going to be around $65 a barrel, WTI crude. By year end, 
I, I, I saw that when oil was at $120. I, I just feel like we're, we're climaxed on the commodity basis. But I don't think we're going to escape that last push lower. I think the market needs a real flush where people feel good about getting back into something at a bargain price. And we heard, Joe, like three-year inflation uh, expectations have dropped a little bit. The, the consumption headwind to consumers from higher gas prices certainly have alleviated. I'll just get back to you. I think sentiment, which printed on the AAII bull bear, you, know, you name it, uh, about, about a month ago was the fourth worst on record. Um, sentiment, as we know, positioning, uh, as we know, has also been extremely light. It's not as if um, there haven't been a, a lot of folks that, that actually have, have been well positioned for this. So if you think about where the market it is and where some of the, the quant analysts are saying is that positioning is so light that if you start to get some turn, but again, until the Fed has has, has told us it's, it's at least time to pause, and they may not be as clear as they used to be, and they probably don't know, uh, I think those are really the moments that we can really start putting bottom talk in. Um, right now, we still haven't heard from companies, and there's very little incentive for companies right now to tell you how great their business is, and we're just getting into the heart of earnings.